Hello, I'm Pete Martin. This Barry Harris for Jazz Mandolin series teaches the wonderful bebop improvisation method of pianist Barry Harris applied to the mandolin. If you would like to see more videos in this series, or videos of mandolin, fiddle, improvisation, and other music subjects, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. This series of videos is designed to be viewed in order as concepts build on previous videos. If you are new to Barry's ideas, I suggest you go back and start with the first video in this series, the link of which is above. There's a PDF file that goes with this video. Email me and ask for Barry Harris for Jazz Mandolin number 22, Lady Be Good. Lady Be Good is a common swing tune and is a good vehicle to look at how to apply some of Barry's improv ideas. It consists of one major, one diminished, and a few dominant chords, making it easy enough to look at a number of things you can try. Let's look at the chord progression and the chord scale outlines in example one. One, two, three, four. Unlike previous videos, I am not going to have you learn specific lines. It's up to you to make lines from what you have learned so far. I will demonstrate some ideas, but not have you learn them verbatim. Instead, I want you to make up your own ideas. The chord scale outlines in the first two measures is G major up, C7 up. Okay, now you could do G7 up if you wanted to for the first one. Because of course G7 leads to C, and then C7 up. But it's your option, and so I just chose here to write one of the two of them, which is G major up. Then C7 up. So let's look at some lines that can work for this. Once again, I don't want you to necessarily copy these, but I want you to take your instrument and make up some lines using Barry's system. Okay, um, I could start up, I could start on the E note, the sixth of the G scale, play up a chord, then up to E, and down chromatically to a C note, and that would put that right where the C7 is. One and two and three and four and one. Then when I got to this C, we're now on the C7, so I'm thinking C7 scale. I could go chromatically down the C7 scale to B flat. Remember, when we start on the root on a dominant, we can go down adding one extra half step. And when I get here, I can do a pivot, then down the C7 scale, then I get to C where I can play a four phrase. So this whole phrase. Okay. 
me play that again. I played an F sharp where I should have played an F. Sorry. Ready? Go. The next two measures are G major 7. So we just need G major ideas. Okay? Let's say, um, so let's start on the third, run up to the fifth. The third of G major, run up to the fifth. Excuse me, so B up to D. And then let's do the five phrase there. Down to D, or to B, where we can do the three phrase. Okay, then G to E. So, I can start uh, a beat early. One, two, three. And that puts me there at the C chord. I can start a beat later. One, two, three, four, one. That makes me a little bit behind in the... But that sounds good in a jazz context. And notice that that's still G to E. Those are two notes of a G6 chord, so that makes a really nice phrase to stop on. Also, notice I'm stopping on the offbeat, which is a very common jazz device. Two, three, four, one. And then you could do another little phrase, which would uh, fill out the two measures of G, of G major. The next thing we need is two measures of D7, and we saw that because we have the D7 scale up and down. That means we need to use two measures worth of D7 phrases. So let's start on A and go up a triad, which this triad is A, C, and E, which is uh, just three notes of a D9 phrase, the ninth being the next extension of a dominant seven, and it, has the, it fills the same function. So just A, C, E, up a triad from A in the, on the D dominant scale. Now let's come down chromatically to see uh, a pivot, um, down the scale two more notes, then let's play the uh, four phrase. So we have... Okay, we could vid then easily to go back to the G, which is the next chord. Okay, so we have G major 7 and D7 here. Let's say that, uh, that we start on G and uh, come down a triad, then A to B, up to D, so that's a third. Now we're going to go up to E and up another third. Okay. So, so far we have... Um, then I'm going to go down to F sharp and up a diminished. Then I'm going to go back to the flat 7. We're up, by now we're on the D7. Back to the, the C, the flat 7 to D7 up chromatically, then down to B, and hit G. Right now we're at the beginning of the second A part. The second A part is exactly the same as the first A part except for the last two measures. In the first A part, the last two measures go G major 7 to D7, so we did 
uh, G major up, D7 up. But here we're going to go. We're going to go uh, G major to G7. So one of our options for the, the chord scale outlines here and the, the scale to play is G major, then G7. And that's what I gave you in the outline. However, you could just do two measures of G7, which is G7 up and down. Because the first chord of the B part is a C7. G7 leads to C7. Okay? So you can either think of this as one measure of G major, one measure of G7, or two whole measures of G7. For this, I'm going to stick to the original outlines I did, think one measure G major, one measure G7. Okay, so if I start on uh, an E note, let's say I go up a five note chord, um, then I'm going to play Just a little scale phrase that gets me back to G. And that's where the G7 would start. So now I can descend using the one extra half step, this, the G dominant scale. Now I'm going to jump down to the flat 7, C, or then to E, because that's where the next chord is going to start, uh, um, the C7. So let's try this. Or If you like the material presented here, you may be interested in some of the 13 instruction books I've written for mandolin, fiddle, and improvising. I am also available for private lessons in Seattle and Issaquah, or online through Skype and FaceTime. Check these out at either of my websites, petamarpress.com or jazz-mandolin.com. Also consider a small donation via PayPal at my email address shown here. Now let's look at the B part of Lady Be Good. For the C7 to C sharp diminished, we play what Barry calls C7 up and down to the third of A. The third of A is the, the note C sharp. So if I'm in the A major scale, the third note is C sharp. That's the third of A. So what this does, it accounts for this C sharp diminished sound. So the chords in Lady Be Good in the B part go C7 for four beats, then C sharp diminished for four beats. So. doesn't matter how you play that. Some people like to play that with the pinky. I like to play it with the ring most of the time because if I'm in the key of A, that's the ring finger is going to go on the sixth fret. Um, you can finger it either way. You know, there is no right or wrong in the case of something like this. All right, so let's look at what happens when we get to this B flat note and start coming down the scale. Look at what notes are on the beat. B flat. G, E, C sharp, or D flat. Well, what are the notes in the C sharp diminished chord? C sharp, D flat, which we had here, E, which we had on the beat, G, which we had on the beat, and B flat, which we had on the beat. So that outlines this diminished chord extremely well. So let's say that we start um, uh, on the, the, the at the end of the previous phrase. We were start we were hitting the E notes. So let's start there. 
Um, so let's go up a, a chord from E on the C7 scale, C dominant scale. Remember the first measure, we're playing C dominant idea. Then to C and back down. And now let's just go straight down this scale. Okay, so what did I do? Up a chord. Now I did something, oh, okay. Down to C, down, you know, the, the extra half step on the C7 scale. That's a really nice line. For C7, C diminished. C sharp diminished, I'm sorry. Next, there are two measures of G major 7. Since we saw that in the A part as well, we won't cover that again. The next thing we need to look at in the bridge of Lady Be Good is two measures of A7. So we saw in the scale outline A7 up and down. So we need some of Barry's ideas for what to do uh, based on the A7 scale. So let's start on a C sharp note, the third of A7. Let's play down a chord. That would be C sharp A, F sharp D. Now let's go down one more note in the A7 scale, down to C sharp, and let's go up a diminished. The A7 is may is one of the four related dominants that's made off of um, the B flat diminished. So if you need to go review the four related dominants video, do that. But we can do that. Um, now we can go down to A and up the dominant scale. Then to F sharp, so we're going to go at the end of the A ascending A dominant scale and end on F sharp. So that would make then that would be where the D7 would come in. We saw two measures of D7 in the A part, so we won't revisit that again. I want you to build some lines on Lady Be Good using any of Barry's ideas taught in the series up to this point. Start a couple measures at a time, then improvise that same two measures at a slow tempo. Then do the same thing for the first four measures. Then try the whole A part. Work through the B part with the same method. Then repeat in a different key. When you can do this in several keys comfortably, move on to the next video. If you have questions or suggestions, please use the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm Pete Martin. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.